surprise. I bet you were expecting Amy this afternoon. Well, it's Mr. Amy, as they call me. Uh, I'm glad y'all are here. Happy Finish Friday. Happy Friday. Hope y'all are looking forward to the weekend. Uh, we're so glad that you're here and able to uh, be able to see some of the things that we're doing here at the studio. You know, one of the questions is that the, uh, is lacquer. People are asking about lacquer. They're saying, you know, I used your lacquer and my finish came out dull. It came out rough. Uh, it did not look shiny and smooth. And, you know, there must be something wrong with the lacquer. Well, you know, one of the things that we try to uh, educate and teach on with our lacquer is that our lacquer is a true nitrocellulose lacquer. It is not an enamel spray paint like you would buy at the, uh, at the hardware store to spray paint, where so many items that you can get in the spray paint that you would be able to just spray it on like hairspray and voila. But it doesn't give you that slick, automotive finish like you do with the nitrocellulose lacquer. Some of the things that we can do with the lacquer that we can use the lacquer with, like uh, if our camera person will get onto this uh, piece of glass, what we did, we used a combination of lacquer, our stencils, uh, we used some uh, water drizzle to create and so we're um, we're able to create what we did this for was a backsplash that we used. Uh, some of the other things that you can use that on, like this was a before and after with a lamp. Uh, you remember, some of y'all, if you're my age, you remember when rust was a big color. Uh, what we did, we transformed that using our pink, and we were able to do that on a ceramic, uh, a ceramic lamp so that you've got this really, it looks like a factory finish when, you're, uh, when you complete the project. You can use this also on, uh, you can use it on wall tile. So if you have ceramic tile in your bathroom or kitchen, you can use it on that. Uh, you can also use it on, of course, furniture, wooden furniture, which, you know, if anybody has a piece of wooden furniture, uh, that has been stained and has a clear coat over it, that clear coat more than likely is nitrocellulose lacquer. And the only difference between that and ours is we've pigmented ours so you get these great colors of pink and purple and chocolate brown and uh, uh, green and turquoise. So we've got all these wonderful colors and we also do have a clear lacquer that we'll talk about uh, a little later. So if you're doing a project and you actually did stain, we have a clear lacquer to go over that piece of furniture as well. Uh, one of the things people talk about, can I use it on metal? Yes, you can use it on metal, but keep in mind, this is a lacquer, it is not a metal paint. So that if your, uh, your iron piece of iron furniture, metal furniture, when it begins rusting, this is not going to prevent the rusting. That is, you'll have to use a true metal primer for that. They said, oh, well, you guys carry furniture lacquer primer. Well, this primer is a sanding sealer, and the sanding sealer is used on in this little uh, surface that we're going to work on here. You can see it's a little bit grainy. It is unfinished. And that is what we're going to use the primer on because this will seal the wood, it will help fill the grain, and it will give you a surface so that when you use the lacquer on it, it won't keep absorbing the lacquer. Because if you use the lacquer directly on unfinished wood, it's going to absorb and it's going to keep absorbing and you'll use two or three times the amount of lacquer uh, that you would not have to use had you used the primer first. So our primer, sanding sealer, seals, and allows you to be able to lacquer without the raw wood absorbing that lacquer. So that's what our primer for. It's not a metal primer. We have a question. Can we, can it be sprayed on clear glass stencil and then antique the glass? Clear glass stencil. If Maybe with a stencil. Maybe. 
So like you could on this one, do you want to show them the back? So this is the front of the glass. We could come back and do silver leaf on the back of that and it would show through. It really shows up better like that. But yes, we used a stencil on this. Now, keep in mind, this stencil was a Mylar one-dimensional stencil. You know, we have a sister company, a maker studio, and that has the mesh stencils. The mesh stencils may not be as uh, effective because the mesh will or could possibly uh, prevent the lacquer the from mylar. going through that mesh and applying to the surface. And what we used here was just a just a, uh, a one-dimensional, open, positive, negative uh, stencil on this to create the pattern with this. A good question. Jean, can you use the lacquer on an existing finished piece of furniture? Yes, you can, assuming that that existing finish is either paint or another type of clear coat. Um, you know, I can't say that it's good on any and every finish, not knowing what that, but if it's another lacquer finish, if it's a painted finish, uh, you can certainly use it on that. Um, one of the things you want to make sure is before you use it on an existing finish is to use the clean slate. Clean slate is a refinisher's grade, furniture cleaner, wax, grease, grime remover, gets all of that off also remove silicone so that when you use the lacquer you'll have not only better adhesion but you will also have a better finished product because the lacquer won't uh, there's a technical term called fisheye in refinishing and that's where if there's silicones or any kind of oil or wax and you spray the lacquer it will tend to bubble right in those areas or separate and it looks like a little fisheye or a dimple like a golf ball so this will help prevent that because it's getting all those waxes, oils, uh, silicones, all those wonderful things off of there that will be um, detrimental to your final finish. So if there are any other questions about uh, surfaces, so uh, again, can we use this on metal? Yes. Does it prevent rusting of the metal? No. You can. If, let's say you've got a metal that's clean or you've got a metal that's rusted get all that if it's rusted get a rust remover get all of that off clean it off get it prepped you can use a metal primer first an actual metal primer and prime it to help prevent that metal from rusting then you can use the lacquer on top of it um, is the lacquer safe for outside the lacquer, think about your furniture, your, your wooden dressers and wooden chairs and your wooden um, uh, chest of drawers, nightstands. You wouldn't set those outside and you don't want to use this with outside either because the sun will have a tendency to yellow the lacquer, to crack the lacquer. Uh, it is not meant for outside use. That's when you'd want to use a uh, an oil-based polyurethane that's meant for outdoors. Uh, so if, if some people say, can I use it on my front door? Interior of the front door, yes. Exterior of the front door, not so much because again, that sun will cause it to yellow, it'll cause it to crack, and we don't want you to have a, a, an unhappy project at the end of the day. So, Can we use it on hardware? Yes, you can use it on hardware, clean the hardware first. Keep in mind too, the lacquer, uh, it is not indestructible. It's just like, again, your dresser, uh, chest of drawers, nightstand, you put something heavy uh, on it, keys, things like that, it will scratch it. So you just have to use some, uh, some form of care when you're, uh, when you're using it. So the first thing we're going to do, again, this piece is unfinished, so we do want to seal it. If, I, if I'm really wanting to do a whiz-bang job on this, I'll even go out to the paint store or hardware store and get what's called a grain filler. And what that does, it will literally fill this heavy, heavy grain that the sanding sealer won't necessarily fill. It will help seal this, but it may not fill some of this heavier grain, 
So I'll get a grain filler and use that so that when I'm finished, I will have a smooth seal finish that will make my lacquer look like a mirror finish. If we have an existing finish on our piece of furniture, mm -hmm. it has lacquer on it. Mm -hmm. So we go to the antique mall mm -hmm. and we, we get that. Mm -hmm. Is it necessary to use the primer on it or can I go directly to my color? Well, here's the caveat on that. Let's say you go out and you get a piece from a vintage store, uh, flea market, antique mall, and that piece is, has wear spots on it meaning that it's worn through the finish down to the wood. What's going to happen when you lacquer it, the lacquer is going to be uh, absorbed in those raw areas. And so what we do, we do want to prime those areas. And if you have any question, prime the whole thing, unless you can visually see where those areas are. And you can, you can spot prime those areas without doing the whole piece but if there's any question just go ahead and prime the whole piece is it safe to use it in a sunroom again even with your windows that sun will come through and if you get a lot of sunlight and see to yellow and if there's enough heat it can crack that lacquer so you want to be careful uh, another caveat of that while before we get started uh, can I spray indoors you want to use this in a ventilated area. If you're doing a piece of furniture that's attached to the wall, then you want to have some type of circulation going on. Open the windows, get a uh, box fan to draw that, uh, that uh, solvent out because these are solvent based. These are not water based lacquers, it's a solvent based. And you do want to have some type of, uh, of airflow to get that out because you will uh, have the equivalent of happy gas uh, after about 30 minutes of using this in a closed area. Say, well, what if I take it outside and spray it out on the driveway? Well, one of the things that you want to be careful of is overspray. If you get a lot of airflow over the surface you're spraying, it'll have a tendency to take that lacquer and just push it away and you're just getting propellant, which is going to leave a rough, uh, dull surface. So you do want to use this where there's not a lot of airflow over the surface, but you're ventilated everywhere else. Hope that makes sense. If you go outside, create what we do, a spray booth. We'll take some big pieces of cardboard, tape it with some duct tape, and create a literally a booth to be able to go in that booth. I'm outside, got plenty of ventilation, but it's protecting me from the airflow going over the surface of my piece. So we can talk more about that if you have questions because we'll continue to answer questions after this. So first thing I'm gonna do, I am gonna use the furniture lacquer primer. I'm gonna prime this so that it will help seal the surface. We wanna shake this well. You can hear the little ball agitating because we've gotta get all of this mixed up because if you don't, then you're not getting all the good stuff that's settled down to the bottom. You want to shake this for about 30, 45 seconds to a minute. Uh, a lot of it depends on how long has it been sitting on the shelf in your house before you've used it. I like to shake it for about a minute, and um, I've shaken this one very thoroughly before we went to online, so I won't have to shake it as much, but just really give it a good shake. It gives your arms a good workout maybe dance around a little bit, get a little aerobics in there while you're doing it. And, hey, I like multitasking because Amy tells me I need to multitask more. So here we go. So one of the things about spraying your lacquer, it cannot be sprayed like hairspray. There is a systematic way of applying this. If I'm working on a horizontal surface, I'm going to spray from the area closest to me and move towards away from me. So start where I, the closest to me, move away from me. If I do it in reverse, if I start on the far side and work back, I'm throwing overspray into my fresh lacquer. So I don't wanna do that. Same thing with a vertical surface. If I'm working on a vertical surface, I wanna start at the top and work my way down. And again, we do this in what's called passes. Passes meaning I go one pass, drop down, another pass, drop down, another pass. 
I'm overlapping each pass as I work my way down. But I start at the top, work my way down, so that that overspray is not falling back into my fresh lacquer. If I start at the bottom and work up, that propellant or overspray falls in the fresh lacquer, it's going to get rough and dull. It'll feel like you threw sand in it. Kind of like in the Sahara Desert. So, we'll start closest to me. You want to be about six to eight inches away from your piece before you start. And it's not a, this is not a uh, sprint, it's a marathon. So we're not going back and forth as fast as we can go. We need to allow each pass to lay down lacquer before I go to the next pass. So see the movement? And I stop at the end so that I'm not throwing out a lot of overspray. Start back, I'm overlapping, let go. Start again, overlapping, let go. Start again. And you see the speed that I'm doing this? I am not trying to see how fast I can finish it because otherwise I am just getting propellant. And I continue to do this. We are in a studio setting and it is smelling, but we have a fan blowing the air on us. So I would continue to do this until I finish the piece. I'm going to let this dry 20 to 30 minutes and then I'm going to take my sandpaper take my sandpaper, either 320 or 400 grit after this dries, the longer the better. If the longer you let this dry, the better because when you let this dry, uh, it's easier to sand. If you try to sand it too soon, it's going to get too gummy. So I'm going to set this down. Here's a piece that we've primed. So we've used the primer. There's uh, two to three coats of primer on this, and I sand in between each coat. The reason we do that is that when you sand between coats, what you're doing, you're leveling. And you spray, and then you sand, and that's leveling. So each time, it's, it's sealing this and leveling so we get a smoother, smoother surface. So we'll take our the one that I used today was orchid. Orchids are really uh, fluorescent purple, very bright, very uh, eye-popping purple. On trend. It's very much on trend. Very on trend. And if you want something, if you need a little pop of, uh, of sparkle pop jewelry in your in your uh, room, use this on a lamp, on a, on a glass vase. You could lacquer your eyeglasses if you wanted to. You could yeah, lacquer plastic see, jewelry. Though. You could, will you clean it? It'd be hard to see if you lacquered your glasses. I just want to show them before you do this. This was a pair of lamps that we did that were pink. But I'm just telling you, orchid and aubergine are hot, hot, hot colors. So I have already sanded, but just to show you, again, three, and you say, why 320 or 400 grit? If you use anything uh, coarser, say 220, 180, 120, and all of the uh, heavier grits. If you use anything heavier, it will literally scratch the finish when you spray your second or third or fourth coat. So 320 to 400, and you just, and as you can see, the grain is running left to right. So I'm gonna sand with the grain. I'm not gonna sand across the grain, I'm gonna sand with the grain. Jean, everybody's saying this is a great video. Thank you. You're so welcome. I'm glad to do this. Lacquering is something that uh, I've paid for because I've done this for years and years and years, refinishing and finishing furniture, going from refinishing antiques to uh, finishing new furniture. As y'all know, we uh, probably spent over 20 years designing, and that would be my wife, designing and manufacturing um, furniture for um, all over the world. We've had the customers in uh, Dubai, we had customers in uh, all countries like Australia, all over. 
that uh, had bought our furniture. And they loved lacquer. And they loved the lacquer. We had the uh, color lacquer, we had the clear lacquer, so, and of course painted furniture. So as you're hearing me shake the shake and bake here. So well, now we're ready to do the coat. Now remember, we're going to start closest to us. We also have an eggplant. I just realized mm -hmm. the eggplant. Can I ask a favor? Or you, you've already stepped out the orchid. Yeah, okay. it doesn't matter. You want to do this? I love the eggplant. Okay. Eggplant is so... Um, they said, Pam, uh, Pammy said, give your bride a hug. Pammy, he can't right now because he's actually lacquering and I'm holding the phone. Oh my gosh, Elizabeth just bought the lacquer and she's going to be refinishing the pieces. This is so great. Good. This is this really is, helping her. This is good. And see, you didn't have to go somewhere and have to pay for a class to learn how to do this. We're showing it to you live and online. Sorry, this one wasn't shaken previously, so I've got to do a little extra effort to it. All right, so same thing. We're going to start closest to us and work our way forward. We're making passes left or right. Does anybody remember how far away we keep the nozzle as we spray? All right, guys, how, somebody answer. How far away did Jean tell everybody um, to, hold, to keep, hold, the can hold your can away? Somebody say, how far did he say to keep the can away? Well, we'll see if you're awake. We're gonna wait just a minute. We wanna make sure these are really important tools for y'all to be able to have a great lacquering job. All right, Denise said six to eight inches. Ooh, thank you, Denise. Six thank to eight you. inches. Stacy, good job. Stacey. There you go. Yes. 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 Thank you. Amy wants hearts. I want answers. I want to know people are listening. Guys, send him some hearts. Tell him where you're coming from. Um, you know the algorithms. And please, 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 if this is helpful to you, share it with your friends. It lets everybody know what we're trying to do here at Amy Howard. There you go. So here we go. Now this is going to get a little fragrant again because of the solvents. But so we're going to notice also I put a little piece of cardboard down to protect our tabletop. So here we get started. See how I'm overlapping each pass. I'm loving this color. See how I do. Notice that I'm getting enough lacquer down. And I'm not trying to see how fast I can do it. It's about making sure I get enough lacquer down. Oh my gosh, this color's awesome. Guys, this color is so on trend. This is eggplant. Notice, oh. I'm, again, I'm overlapping. See the overlapping? I'm not jumping ahead. And once you start this, you cannot stop until you get to the end of the surface that you're spraying. If I stop and come back, it's going to leave a line. Oh my goodness, yeah. guys, look at this. Look at this. Wait, it, I wish you could see it. This color is absolutely to die for. On the screen, um, oh my gosh, Diane painted, painted her mantle in this color. Okay, so I have a question, Jean. Could I paint, like we talked about this, can you paint lamps? Absolutely you can, you can paint your lamps. Could I paint my mantle in lacquer? Yes, we want to make sure, um, again, there's heat that comes from your fireplace, so we want to make sure that the mantle is far enough away and from the And has tile opening. around it. That, it, that you've got enough space. And the way you can tell, let's say when you do, when you're doing your fire, uh, in your fireplace, if you touch the mantle and that mantle's hot, it's probably too hot to withstand uh, the lacquer finish for any length of time. Uh, but if you touch, and there's no, which same, now I know with ours, uh, because I've checked it, uh, the mantle does not get warm when we have a fire. So, uh, we know that that could be lacquer. Yeah. So you can see. Lamps, man. You got my name on that. So see how the, uh, as this is going to dry, it's still going to stay glossy. Notice in the finish on the this. The sheen is so beautiful. See how uniform it is. There's no spottiness to it. 
because again, the application of the technique is everything. This is a lot warmer. I'm looking at the color on the screen, guys, and I'm just gonna tell you, this is a warmer eggplant color. It's not nearly as purpley. It's, a, it's just a warm, gorgeous, gorgeous color that you are absolutely gonna love. All right, so Jean, take us through as far as, um, you know, Michelle is saying, can this be used on tile? Yes, it can. We've used it on ceramic tile and it looks like it's brand, brand new. Brand, brand new. And keep in mind, that, mind, that is a wall tile. Yes. You don't want to use this on your floors. Keep in mind, it's too would slick. you walk on top of your dresser? Would you walk on top of your nightstand? No, because why? It's going to get scratched and scuffed up, and so would the floor. So you don't want to use this on your floor, but wall tile, uh, backsplash, uh, yes, absolutely. Some people ask, well, can I use this on the, um, on my bathroom vanity countertop? We would not recommend it unless you came back and put a water clear, oil-based polyurethane on top of it to protect it. Because otherwise, uh, lacquer and water does not work well together. If you think about, remember when you put that glass of, uh, of liquid beverage on your nightstand or on your end table and forgot about it, and when you picked it up, had a big water ring, water and lacquer do not mix. But a water base, um, excuse me, a water clear, oil based polyurethane on top would give it the protection so that you could use this on your. Uh, kitchen countertop, your bathroom. But on a nightstand or something like that, we'll talk oh, about sure. this. They can use Bright Idea. Oh, sure. Um, and, and, this, and you want to use, uh, if this is on top of a nightstand, now again, I'm talking about a top that gets a lot of use. Yeah. Nightstand, dresser, chest of drawers, you know, you want to put some a coaster on top of that before you put your drink on top. So on this piece, this one I've worked on, it's got about uh, two coats on it so far. Now see the sheen, look how uniform that wow, is. Wow, that's nuts. Now you can see some of that grain in here because again, to really get rid of something that's very grainy, you have to use a grain filler to get that out. Uh, but as you see, it doesn't affect our sheen. We don't have any dull spots. We don't have any rust spots. This is as slick and as smooth as it gets. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna lightly sand it. And again, the longer you let this dry, the before you sand it, the better. So about uh, how long? I, you know, at least an hour. If Maybe you, two? If you, well, if, um, at least an hour. But again, the longer you wait between coats, the better because it's gonna sand so much smoother and easier. And you're going, you're sanding with the grain. And, and what's the, the grid grain. again that you're using? On this one, I'm using 320. I would really prefer 400, but we didn't have any handy, so this is 320. You know, the other thing is, can you show everybody the size of the the sandpaper that you're working with? You know, I'm just using a small, small piece because not, it's I, not necessary. If, if I'm using a giant piece of sandpaper, there's only a little bit that's actually touching it touching my surface. So a lot of people don't realize the, there is such a difference in lacquer in one step. The lacquer has to be sanded in between coats. Why is that? Well again, it goes back to leveling. If you remember a little earlier, we talked about sanding in between each coat and the reason is it levels it. So when we sprayed, it filled the grain a little bit more. But now, so think of it if this was under a microscope, it would look like this because of those dips and valleys due to the grain. So as we're sanding that, it's reducing this to where it's more of a, of a light weight instead of big deep trenches. Just to let everybody see, there are so many great colors that this comes in. But a couple of colors that are very much on trend right now are definitely orchid and um, eggplant. Right now, Gene has orchid that he's working with. Yeah, we it's much prettier in person. It, on the screen here on this phone, it, the color looks different. And keep in mind, too, the um, uh, 
we were used, this was orchid where we sprayed with eggplant a little earlier. So we want to just get some of this residue off from the sanding. If you want to get really fancy, there's a product called tack cloth. And tack cloth is a cloth that's been impregnated with a sticky substance that when you wipe down the surface, it literally clings all of that debris onto the tack cloth. So, all right, so now we've done that and we're gonna spray our final coat. And people might say, how many coats is enough? Well, you want enough to get coverage. You don't wanna say, well, if three coats looks good, 16 coats will look great. No, what'll happen is it gets so thick, it will take forever to cure and it'll be so easy to scratch or dent or dimple. You don't want to just keep building up two to three coats max. If coverage is happening, like this was two coats, and I'm going to do a third because that's going to be my final coat. And I'll take this, you know what, better yet, since I've got coverage. You're not. I am, if I can find it. What are you looking for? The um, Eggplant? No. Uh, Bright idea? Bright idea. Bright idea. Oh, it's right Thank here. You. So, we've got two coats here. But as a rule, Jean, don't we want them to do three coats? You know, this has got two, and my coverage is great. I okay. don't have any bare spots. I don't have any uh, dull spots. I, I see my coverage is, is just like I want. Okay, so this is a question we get from people a lot. Do I need to sand my last coat of color before I do Bright Idea? Good question. And I'm gonna answer that with a visual aid on that. So you see I've sanded this. So look at it. Are we not gonna have scratch marks? Well, here's the deal. If that had been my final coat and I sanded it, yes. what would happen? And now it's dull. Yes. Now, so that's why we do not sand our final coat. But you just did it. It's not my final coat. I'm getting ready to spray clear on it. So clear, clear okay. Clear so the final good. coat of your color, it's okay to sand it. But you... If you're going to use clear. It, you mean bright idea. Bright, bright idea. Got it. Which is okay. clear. Which, Got it. Which I've already lost. Okay. Uh, so that way, if I wasn't going to use the clear, then I would have not sanded this. But I did sand it because I'm. you want to always sand before you put another coat on. We've never done a piece of furniture without doing the bright idea, guys, just so you know. You know why we use the bright idea? Oh, got you stumped. Okay. The reason we use this is because this adds a level of depth that you do not get without it. So think about when you go to an automobile dealership and you see a, um, a very expensive sports car. That car has a beautiful paint job. Why? Because of the amount of clear coats they put on it, it gave that paint more depth and it's a much more expensive uh, automotive finish. So that's what we're gonna do is a, a, a one coat of the Bright Idea. Is the Bright Idea nitrocellulose as well? It is a nitrocellulose lacquer. The only difference between this and any of the colors is this does not have pigment. This one has the pigment to give it that color. Jean, tell everybody um, as you're doing this, what is the difference between our lacquer and just a regular spray paint? Well, for those that have just joined us, because I did go over that earlier, was that we use nitrocellulose lacquer, which is a true lacquer, versus an enamel uh, or acrylic spray paint. And this, you cannot get this type of finish with an acrylic spray paint. And again, the techniques, as we learned this uh, today, the techniques uh, are a little different than just using spray paint, but your finish is again you're going to get an automotive look finish so we're going to again spray and they meld pieces. the word i was looking for was melding yes. acrylic paint sets on top of it, it and this itself. melds it just builds. when you spray nitrocellulose like no matter how old the uh, existing nitrocellulose finish is when you spray another coat on it reactivates it and the two meld Kind of like a uh, husband and wife, the two shall become one.
doing a little preaching on the side? I do that. Pass the plate. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, now every so you're not going to start at the top. Sorry. You're you're going to start at the bottom again Got and it. move. Mm -hmm. I had a little problem with this spraying. All I did was twist the cap. Now it's working. So can everybody see? Do you want to show them the cap as far as how mm. how you can turn it? Yeah, this cap, the little yellow nozzle, can be turned so that this when this sprays, this sprays in a V pattern. So it's spraying like that. If you turn the cap, it changes that pattern. It turns it uh, 90 degrees. Yes, 90 degrees. So in this case, as we're spraying, that fan looks like this, but I can turn it and the fans this way. That happens, let's say you're spraying the legs on a chair, you would want to turn it. Again, I guess a little bit more detail. We're just trying to get the, the overview now. So here we go. So we're starting closest to us. I'm giving it enough time. Look at covered. it, it pops again. Oh my gosh, see, it's fabulous. We're melding. We're that's melding. melding with your color. It's not sitting on top. So that's why it's giving that color that much more brilliance. Six to eight inches, making our passes side to side. You see when I go off the side, I stop spraying. And then before I come back on, oh I Oh my start gosh, I'm spraying. in love. The lacquer gets more props than I do. Ha ha ha. Tomorrow, hey guys, it, tomorrow is Gene's birthday. Uh, so y'all have to be sure and tell him happy birthday. Uh, Look at that. Look, guys, y'all, I'm just going to tell you, everybody knows I love milk paint. Everybody knows. I love lacquer. I mean, this is just dreamy, dreamy, dreamy. I love, because I am kind of, when we're looking at trends and we're looking at what, you know, what's really big right now, of course, you know, I love this. I think the pink is really fun as far as doing the lamp that we did here. But this orchid, Jean, can you show everybody the um, the eggplant? So this orchid that you see right here is what Jean has done on this piece, which would be awesome. Nightstands or look at this. So here is the eggplant. Again, see, it's shiny. It's uniform. We don't have any dull spots. That's we just one coat. Spots. We've not this even finished it. Coat. And then here's our, um, that's eggplant. And then this is orchid. Mm -hmm. So... You see, I mean, of course, this piece that we're showing you here is just um, just a regular campaign piece, but then even like lacquering lamps, being able to add a pop of color um, and make it look totally different. So to answer that earlier question about what happens after you do the last coat, we're finished. There's no more sanding. Uh, so you don't we, sand Bright Idea. We, we, and you don't sand... When you put your lat, whether you use the bright idea or not, when you put that lat last coat on, whether it's your paint or whether it's your uh, clear coat, that last one, there's no sanding. We don't want to sand after that. And then finally, when you finish, turn your can upside down, spray until it stops. Wipe the tip. That way your tip, you don't get product in the tip and it dries and then let's say six months later you want to use that can again and it's not spraying because the tip got clogged up. Why do you turn it upside down? It just gets all of the product out of the tip and then that's the way you're, you're finished with it. And before you spray, again, we will shake for a minute or two. You know, turn that cap back and forth a couple of times and you're ready to spray again. Guys, has this been great? Props to you, Jean. This was awesome. I think it's a great explanation. I, I am a lacquer lover, and um, I, I love, I thought Jean did a phenomenal job. His, you see his technical skills, the detail, his lack of shaving this morning. It's No Shave Friday. No Shave Friday. And, um, you ought to see me on Saturday. <laughs> He probably won't shave on his birthday either because it's his birthday. Can I hang this in my room? <laughs> so, guys, now, just so start thinking about where you want to add a pop of color in your home. And you want to be able to get the lacquer. So, I do want to show this to him. Can I have that bright idea? Mm -hmm. So, you'll start, as Jean said, with the furniture lacquer primer. 
Then you'll go into your color and then you'll want to finish it out with bright ideas. Furniture lacquer, primer, and your bright idea. So let's get wild. Let's start thinking about um, Easton Green, Belize, Brisson Red. But guys, I'm in love with Orchid and Eggplant. One last question, Jane. Do you only put on one coat of the bright idea? One coat is plenty. Little, uh, just a, a little extra, let's say you're spraying a vertical surface and you're spraying and you get a run. It's okay. Again, let it dry for an hour. Longer's better if you can let it go two hours. And then remember, you're gonna have to sand between coats anyway. You're gonna lightly sand a little bit extra on that run and smooth that run down. And then when you put your next coat on, that, that, that run will have disappeared. You'll be fine. Can I tell them the spoiler alert? Yes. You want a little spoiler alert? Yes. You know, Amy's always got a spoiler alert. I get to do it this time. In a few weeks, there is a color coming back. Does anybody know what that color is? Yay! You know? You know? Yay! Oh, you mean you're telling people stuff you're not supposed to tell them? Well, no, I'm telling them what's going to happen, not something I might do. I'm Yay! telling them it is already happening, and in a few weeks, we will have. First of August. Black. Back, well, second week of August. Uh, we will have black. Yay! Back. Black due, lacquer's back, guys. Due to popular demand, uh, we said we will have that come back. Is it popular demand? Well, it was demand by my wife, <laughs> so it's back. <laughs> I told I told Jean, I was like, I know colors in, but guys, don't we need black lacquer? So I am so excited. Black lacquer will be back. Every room needs a little black. So. I don't know about popular, but it was a demand. <laughs> Happy birthday, Jean. Thank you. Thank you for doing a great job. Thank Everybody you. says, what a, um, uh, they said spill the tea. So I guess that's spill the tea. That's what you did. Okay. You just spilled the tea. Spilled the tea. All, All right. right. Have a great, have a, have a great, great finish Friday, everybody. If you loved this, how could you not? And if it was very informative, do you share it with your friends? Because this is going to be a great way for people to have great success on their lacquer projects. Sharing is caring. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. Happy Friday. Finish buttons. <laughs>